Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to uh, episode 12 of Chess Basics, Things Every Chess Player Ought to Know. Um, in this episode, I'm going to talk about the case of two pawns versus one pawn. Uh, I'm not going to uh, cover it exhaustively. I'm just going to give a few uh, kind of typical examples. And then uh, after this, I am uh, going to talk about, in the next few episodes, I'm going to talk about mating combinations. So this is going to be the last one on king and pawn endings for a while. So I wanted to leave you with some uh, general rules and ways to play um, that apply to uh, lots of king and pawn endings. So you can have them as uh, ideas in the back of your mind if you get to, into one of these situations. So um, the first kind of general rule is that um, the more pawns there are, um, the more chances you have for winning. So you want to keep uh, the pawns on the board. And uh, this is a, an example here. This would be a lot easier to win if uh, there was two more pawns. Like if there was a black pawn here and a white pawn here, for example, uh, then you would have an easy win because you could just run and gobble up the two, run over here, gobble up the two black pawns, and uh, he would have to uh, waste time, black would have to waste time uh, taking this pawn over here, and so, so you would have an easy win. In this case, it's a little trickier because all you've got is a rook pawn over here. You can still um, get there first, so, but let's watch what happens when you just run for it. So you go here, he takes the pawn, you go here, he comes after you, you go here, he comes here, you take the pawn, and he goes to this square. And uh, oddly enough, this is now a draw. If you go forward, um, he just stays on these two squares, and you can never get out of this box. If you push the pawn forward, uh, it still doesn't help. You see, you're just never able to get out of the way of your own pawn. And um, the other way to play it is to uh, try and come this way, but that allows the black king in. And, and as you know from the uh, series, uh, earlier in the series and in the first episodes, this is the draw with the rip pawn. So uh, you just can't win that way. Um, so let's try another way. <clears throat> Suppose you um, just try and push this pawn down the board like it was uh, your only pawn. Okay, uh, he steps in front of the pawn and now you have to make a decision. If you uh, move here to this square, it's a stalemate, so you don't want to do that. Um, so your only other choice is to abandon the pawn and go after the rook pawn. And um, you will see, unfortunately, um, that you end up in the same situation as the last time. You can go this way or you can go that way, but uh, it doesn't matter. Um, black is going to draw this. So does that mean this position is a draw here? Um, no. No, actually, this is a win for white. Um, you just need one more tempo. If you notice, the king was getting there just in time to prevent you from escaping. If you had one extra move, um, then you could win this. And the way you get that extra move is you start by trying to push the pawn, or acting like you're going to push the pawn. He has to step away from the pawn, and now you can step forward. You're next to the pawn, and you're keeping the king out of this square. So. The black king has no square he can go to that attacks the pawn, so he steps here to block your king. And now you make a run for it. And um, if he tries to follow you, eventually he'll get far enough away that you can just push this pawn and win with it. So black is going to go after that pawn, and you keep running for his pawn. And now you see there's two squares between the black king and the white king, and that extra square is the difference between winning and losing because you can step to here, and now he can't stop you from queening. He can come around here, or he can go the other way, but basically you've shut him out of this area, and this pawn is going to become a queen. There's nothing he can do about it. So that's how you win. And um, the way this uh, concept applies to many king and pawn endings is um, this is what's called an outside past pawn. And uh, in many situations, you use this pawn not it's not the uh, it's the pawn that gives you the advantage, but it never becomes a queen. It it gives you the advantage because you can use it to distract your opponent's king, and uh, you just want to milk that advantage for everything it's worth. So you 
you uh, make a few moves over here to force him away from it, and then you make a break for it. Um, you don't need to waste time pushing this pawn forward. It's often a mistake to even touch this pawn. You just leave it there as a distraction for your opponent's king. You push him away from it to gain as much time as possible, and then you make a break for the other side of the board. And this kind of strategy works uh, when there's lots of pawns on the board, too. Okay, let's set up another position here. So that was called the outside passed pawn. This position is called the protected passed pawn. Oops, put that in the wrong square. And your protected passed pawn is this one. You see it's passed. There's no other pawns in front of it between it and the, uh, the goal line. And it's protected by the pawn that's behind it. So the king can never uh, uh, take these pawns. In fact, um, if you look at the square of this pawn, you can see that uh, black's king is confined to this rectangle, and it doesn't even matter that white's king is really far away. You have all the time in the world to approach. So, for example, if you started coming up this way, oh, I guess I, I made it black's move. If um, black ever tries to go and uh, take your undefended pawn here, you can just push a pawn. And that doesn't matter if he wins that pawn because you get a queen, and that's going to be enough to win. So um, you can just ignore black's king. He's really not able to do anything but uh, move around in these uh, squares where he stays within the square of the pawn. And uh, what you want to do is you want to approach the pawns from the side where his pawn is, and, and uh, just this is the easiest way to win. There are other ways. You attack his pawn, he defends it, and then you step forward. And he has only that one square that he can defend the pawn from. He has to step away now, and you win the pawn. And now he's going to try and block you. So you kind of uh, repeat what we learned in the last time, which is uh, you need to give up one of your pawns in order to win. Um, you push this pawn forward, he steps in front of it, and then you just step away from it and let him have it. And the reason you can let him have it is because your king is guarding all of these squares. So you've just used that other pawn to get your king into an excellent position here, where which allows you to force this pawn through. And there's no way you can stop it. Okay, so in this beginning position, this, uh, the value of the protected pass pawn is it ties down your opponent's king. If there's more pawns on the board, then you can roam the board and uh, pretty much gobble them up at leisure. Um, and um, if this is the only setup on the board, then you can use the fact that the black's king is tied down to get your king into a good position and win his pawn and then go on to win the game. So let's set up another position that's uh, slightly trickier. I'm just going to move everything over one square. And um, we'll go ahead and uh, put White's king closer. And uh, let's make it White's turn to move. So, um, <coughs> again, Black's king is confined to these squares. Uh, what's different in this case is you can't go in and attack on this side because uh, the uh, Black pawn here is guarding this, this square, so you can't get through. Um, so you have to go around on the other side. You can still win this one, um, and it's kind of instructive the way you win. Take advantage of the fact that uh, Black's king is confined to a few squares. You step here, and um, he steps in front of you to give the most resistance. And once again, you give up the pawn. So you say check. You push the pawn, it's check, and he steps in front of it. And then you just step sideways and say, go ahead, take my pawn. And he takes it, and now you go here. And um, black is uh, limited in the number of squares he can go to. Uh, this is protected. You can't come forward because your king is guarding all those squares. So he can go sideways or he can go back. Let's say he goes sideways. Um, he can go s back now, or he can go in front of you. But that would be a mistake because you just go over here and uh, win his pawn. So 
So he has to stay kind of close to his pawn. You step over here and attack it. He steps here. You step forward, and that drives him away from the pawn. He has no squares he can go to that defend the pawn because the king is covering these squares and your pawn is covering those squares. So he is forced to step back. Now you take the pawn. He steps in front of you. But you know from watching the first four videos in this series, this is a win for white because your king is on the sixth rank in front of your pawn. So uh, let's just go through it for old time's sake. Um, you just step to the side. He steps in front of you and you push the pawn. He steps in front of the pawn. You push it again. So it's just the timing works out in this case when you're on the sixth rank where it's now black's turn to move and he's got to move out to the side and that's winning. So you can win this one too. And the interesting thing is it seems like you're giving up this pawn for almost nothing. Um, you have a whole pawn advantage, you just give it away, but what you got in return was you got a good position of your king. With your king here and his king here, um, this is a win because you can go back and forth on these squares, force his king backwards. Um, he's limited to these squares here, and every time he steps away, you, you just take away one of his squares. So after he's gone back here, forward. After he goes back there, then you step here, and now he's limited to these squares. So he steps there, you step here, you've taken away one more square. Oh, now I guess you, you step sideways. You take away this square and attack his pawn, force him to this square. So you just take away his squares one by one, you get to this position, and he has no more squares that he can go to to defend that pawn. And you win. So um, the other interesting thing is that uh, to show the importance of the king position let's, if we were to uh, play some bad moves here just stepping back one square this is now a draw because uh, black has gained the opposition and you can't penetrate everywhere you go the black king just steps in front of you so each move is critical and you can't go sideways because uh, the black pawn is guarding that square. So if we wind back to this situation here, you're here, he takes the pawn, you can't step back. You might think you're going here and then there, but uh, when you step back, he grabs the opposition and that's a draw. So in this position, you always have to go forward. And you're, you're grabbing the opposition and forcing the opponent's king back or sideways. Come in like that. So that's how you win those games, and that technique of kind of outflanking your opponent's king and pushing him away from the pawn, that works when there's more than just two pawns on the board, too. Okay, let's set up the final position for this, uh, for this video. And this one is going to be a draw. Not to, not to give away the answer too soon, but uh, had to show one... One example of how black can hold. Um, okay, white's turn to move. So there is no other side. You've only got one side to play with. But you can try the same technique of coming around, outflanking the uh, king. You're using the, the uh, square of the pawn here, confines the black king to a few squares. And uh, you can use that to uh, gain a good position. What's going on? Oh, he can't um, go there. Right. Okay. Here. Um, so you keep advancing and forcing the king away from these pawns. But now you have a problem. First of all, if you move your king forward, that's a stalemate. The king is covering those squares and the pawn is covering that square. So you can't go forward with your king. And um, if you go forward with your pawn, the king can go there. Now if you step here, it's stalemate. So you have to give up the pawn like before. Now he just takes it. And uh, this is a stalemate because uh, even if you uh, win this pawn, it's a rip pawn. <laughs> uh, must be his move. 
and that's a stalemate. So you just can't win with that one, and that's because the uh, the pawn you want to give up, the protected pass pawn, which you're going to be forced to give up here, is is uh, the, the pawn that's left behind after you give that one up is a rip pawn. And so even though you can win his pawn and get in a good position, uh, you still can't win the game because uh, of that being a rip pawn. So I hope you found that informative. And uh, like I said, in the next video, we're going to go on and look at some uh, mating combinations. should be interesting. And um, if you have any comments on this, uh, let me know by writing in the section below. And I'll see you next time. Bye.